ASU just released their best camera set yet. 4K solar charging, cross camera tracking, and honestly, so many more features I can't even name at the start of this video. The best part though, it's maybe the most affordable 4K solar tracking cameras on the market right now. Today, we'll be taking a deep dive into the T2 Ultra, which is the most premium ASU set I have tested yet. If you're new to bad tech, I try to help consumers like you pick through a very bloated tech market and find products that are really worth your hard earned money. So if you wanna support me along my way and find good products, subscribe right down below. Now, the T2 Ultra is a little bit different from your typical ASU camera. If you watch my channel and you've seen my reviews on this company, I typically call them a cheaper version of Eufy cameras. The software and specs typically stand true and can compete with Eufy, but the build and design feels a little bit cheaper. But of course, included in that is a cheaper price point, which is why I love their cameras and brands so much. But this one's a little bit different. This is the first ASU camera I've tested that really feels like a solid, solid build. I don't really know the best way to explain it, but the outside material just feels better quality. And on top of that, the design just looks a lot better. So ASU was nice enough to send me their four camera T2 kit with the home Cortex system so I can try the full experience and really take advantage of the cross camera tracking we'll be talking about a little bit later. And inside the kit, you get everything from the power cord to the home Cortex system. You get all the mounts and screws and of course your four cameras and four solar panels. This specific model has the option of either mounting the solar panel directly on top of the unit or they include a longer cord still completely waterproof that will then run to a solar panel that you can mount externally. If you need to place one right underneath your eavesdrops for example this gives you a lot of options. Now you can run the solar panel on your roof or somewhere it can actually get a little bit more sun. This specific model only requires around 90 minutes of direct sunlight every day. That way it can continue to run and keep capturing those instances as people or vehicles or animals come into frame. If you're unfamiliar with their home Cortex base, this newer upgraded model has integrated AI features, which I'm gonna show you a little bit later in the video. But on top of that, you can actually upgrade the storage up to 16 terabytes. So although ASU does offer cloud storage options, I have always been a bigger fan of local storage. And in this case, their home base probably offers offers the highest amount of upgradable storage out of any other home base I reviewed. Apart from Eufy's NVR system, which is obviously a lot more expensive, where that can go up to 16 terabytes. Setup from start to finish takes around 15 minutes. Just plug in your home base and set it up through the ASU app, and then it's gonna get you to connect all your cameras together by holding down the power on button. After that's done, go ahead and set up your mounts outside, pick the perfect location, and decide if you're gonna put the solar panel on top or you're gonna run the solar solar panel to the mount a little bit farther away where it can get some better lighting. Then you just slide your camera onto your mount and that's it. They make this pretty foolproof where just about anybody can do it. In terms of specs, this is 4K Ultra HD. It has an aperture of 1.0, which means it lets in a lot more light and will look a lot better in low light conditions. It also includes their true color night vision, which means it will show colored video even without the spotlight active. It's very similar to their D1 Classic kit, just like a fully upgraded version. It still has that bottom trackable lens that can move almost 360 degrees, but they've added in AI tracking as well. I'm gonna put this comparison chart on the screen here that ASU sent me, where it shows the major differences between the D1 Classic and this T2 Ultra. So here are some of the major ones that are probably gonna make you move towards this kit. The major differences I wanted to highlight with this are of course the 4K Ultra HD, the difference in the night vision, the home Cortex kit, which is a major game changer compared to their older home base, and the triple detection system where it uses a combination of radar, infrared, and AI. The difference between a 2K, 3K, or 4K camera is pretty substantial, especially if you're trying to get extra detail in faces or license plates that are driving by. The T2 Ultra really stands up to ASUS claim of a 4K Ultra HD camera. All of the recordings I was able to download or anytime I was watching footage live, it was vivid, the colors looked great, and there was a ton of detail. This meant anytime some 
already walked up to my house, I was able to quickly download the footage, see who it was, or click and get that live view. I have zero complaints about the video footage quality. Now, unfortunately, there is no optical zoom with this model. Instead, you have to rely on digital zoom, which just requires you kind of pinching the screen with your fingers so you can zoom in. The only issue is it does distort the footage quite a bit the farther away things are that you're trying to zoom into. Adding in a 2x or even 3x optical zoom would have been a really nice addition to this camera. Now, it utilizes three different modes of detection. There's radar, infrared, and then it also integrates AI, which is able to distinguish shapes of humans, vehicles, and pets. I would say this is pretty accurate. Now, you're able to adjust this inside of settings. So if you don't want it to detect pets, you can completely turn that off. The whole point of these three different methods of detection is to limit the amount of false notifications you get. This means your camera is turning on less for something random like the tree blowing leaves off of its stems. It was pretty accurate once I was able to go in and tweak the settings. And this is a very important feature for these solar wireless cameras because the more false negatives they have, the quicker the battery drains. Now, because this is a single lens camera, you have to preset the position where it's going to face. This is the main field of view where it's going to detect motion from. Now, once it does detect that motion, it will follow around anywhere that the pet, human, or vehicle goes. And thanks to the Home Cortex system, it's able to mesh your four cameras together, and this enables cross-camera tracking. It works something like this. Person walks up in the front yard, camera one starts tracking. As soon as they go through my gate, camera two locks on and continues the recording. And then they go in my backyard, camera three and four lock on and track them the whole time. ASUS app will then notify you that there's a cross-camera tracking instance, and they kind of lay everything out in order, where you can click through the clips, watch where the person went, and even download those clips. This can all be accessed at any point through the app through a cross-camera tracking filter. It did take around five minutes after I did this instance for the app to notify me, so there is a little bit of a delay there. If I could add one extra feature on to this camera, it would be a sentry mode, where you could pick other positions apart from the preset one, where maybe the camera would rotate to, you know, for 30 seconds out of every hour or two hours. This way, you're limiting a few more blind spots, and if you have a window out of frame, the camera might get lucky and catch somebody that's trying to mess with it. Now, there's two main types of night vision you can select from settings for this camera. There's the true color night vision, and then there's the covert night vision. The main difference is one is going to utilize the spotlight where the other doesn't. Leaving that spotlight off keeps your camera hidden and means nobody can mess with it and they don't know they're being recorded. And honestly, I will say the spotlight on these cameras are not overly impressive. This is something I would have liked to see them add a little bit brighter of a light in. It just ends up being this little beam that covers a very small area. So I'm gonna put up a side-by-side -side here of the true color night vision and the covert night vision. And it's obvious to say the one that does integrate light is going to look a little bit cleaner, a little bit more vivid, but the covert full color night vision is really not that bad. And just to add on to that, here is a recording from my iPhone in the same darkness environment next to the covert night vision. And you can see one looks a little bit brighter where the other not quite as much. Night vision technology on these cameras are getting pretty impressive. It used to be you just get some sort of infrared black and white footage. And now like even with pitch dark, you're getting pretty impressive, almost full color vision. I don't wanna to spend too much time going over the app, but I do wanna show you some of the features that might give you a little extra incentive to pick up the T2 Ultra. Starting with this multi cams mode, which I've actually really enjoyed, it pretty much splits all four of your cameras into this really cool split screen where you can easily access and quickly any of the cameras and also record, speak through the microphone or adjust the volume. And just by tapping on the camera, it will now load up that specific one that you're on and you can control it and do all the normal functions you can do if you access accessed it from the main menu. Now a good chunk of your time will be spent in this events tab right here. Inside you can toggle between either cloud or local storage. The cloud storage is extra. We'll talk about their sub in a few minutes, but they make it easy to filter through the different types of motions and different alerts that you get through the camera. So you can select everything from person, vehicle, or pet. They also have things such as like parking alerts. And this is also where you can access your cross camera tracking. My favorite part is true sight. So we click this tab 
have right here. What this does is break down the instances to these really specific described notifications. So it tells you exactly what happened in the scene before you even watch it. So here's me pulling up in my car. It says a white SUV arrives and parks. A man exits the SUV with a bag and walks into the house. Let's see if that's what happened. There's me pulling up and there's me exiting the SUV. So exactly as it described. Inside of TrueSight, it also gives you security alerts and this what's called unusual activity. I wanna show you this one really funny security alert it gave me. So I'm gonna turn it on here. Now it says, man walks to house, checks phone, then handles what appears to be a knife on the porch. Sounds scary, except that's not what happened at all. This was a guy coming to get a pair of headphones off me. I think he just had his wallet and that was basically it. Probably the best part though is this search feature. And this is something a lot of different camera companies have been integrating. You can basically type in anything. So we just type in cat right here and go search. It should find every clip from all your cameras that have a cat in it. And it's nowhere near perfect as you can see here, but sometimes it does. Let's go ahead and refresh this, find the cat. And there's an orange cat. But you can type in any sort of descriptor. So if I wanted to try, let's say, delivery driver, it will then find clips with like UPS and Amazon and other people that seem to be coming to drop off packages. Inside of the home base, you can actually manage different faces that it's recognized. So you can go inside of these unidentified persons. So you can label pretty much everybody that your camera has recognized. So if I know this is my neighbor, for instance, I can identify them as my neighbor. I can type in their name. And next time they pop up on my camera, that is what the label will say. And you can do this for every single one of your friends, family members, or anybody else that might regularly visit your house. They also have these security reports right at the top here, which are gonna give you daily breakdowns, like big long AI descriptions. It'll tell you how many vehicle events, how many person events, and if there's any attention to details. So these are potential unusual activities. For me, these end up being just like normal things that the camera maybe hasn't had enough time to recognize. But I actually really like this. It's a pretty cool feature, and I find it gives like a nice insight on what happened on your property that day. And last thing I wanna show you is this smart security tab here where you can do things such as turning off all your devices, turning them all on, and you can have two different set of settings for when you're away from home and your home. Last thing is inside of the camera settings, we can set up individual AI surveillance. Now I could spend a whole video going over every single one of these features and testing it, but it has everything from person detection, vehicle, parking guard, pet detection, and intrusion. And you can turn these on and off and adjust them separately. For this video though, we are going to to test parking detection. This allows you to set up this digital region around your car. It's like a virtual box. And when the camera senses that someone comes into that area, it will put off a message or a light and warn them to get away. And so for me, I have it set from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. It will protect my car and it actually will put this message off. So this is what we're gonna test is we're gonna come up to my car past 11.07 and see if the camera says this message and it should also have a white light that pops off as well. And you can also adjust the alarm volume. All this is completely customizable. So let's wait till nighttime and test this out. So it's now just past 11 o'clock. We're gonna go outside and see if we can get the camera to activate off the parking detection. So I'm sketchy. So it should be if we walk just inside of that digital zone that we set up around it earlier. camera's right there. There's my Jeep. You have entered a parking surveillance area. Please leave immediately. You have entered a parking surveillance area. Please leave immediately. That was kind of annoying. <laughs> So that definitely worked and I would say that voice would freak someone out if they walk up to your car. So that is actually a really good solution if you have a lot of people that do like grab and goes in your area, either smashing windows or just trying to open up the door, that might be just enough to deter them. I also wanna say the tracking on this camera is just a lot more responsive than their other D1 Classic that I've reviewed before in the past. It just seems to do a better job keeping me in frame and even when I'm trying to sprint out of the camera, it still falls 
follows me pretty fast and pretty accurately. And I'm sure a lot to do with that is the three detection methods, including the AI tracking, which just works a little bit better. If there's one other feature I could add to this, it would probably be the option for a direct power source and then a settings option where you could potentially run this 24 seven. Since this is hooked up to the home Cortex where you can upgrade the storage to 16 terabytes, being able to run this 24 seven with a direct power source would be pretty beneficial. It would be pretty simple to do too, just include an extra long power cord where if somebody wanted to run this to a direct source, then they can do that as well. But for now, this is meant for instances and when it actually detects motion based on your settings. I can without a doubt say this is my favorite ASU camera set that I've reviewed yet. It's the first one that's a little closer to the main brand that I use, but they still keep their affordable price, which is honestly most important. It's $1,100 regular price, but it's one of those products that are just constantly on sale. So you'll rarely ever have to pay that. Right now for Black Friday, it's down to 750. It might be up by the time you watch this video, but I've also included any coupon codes down below in the description. So if ASU provides any, you guys can check those out as well. Just get an extra discount off their website or off the Amazon link. Thank you guys for checking out today's video. Like always, if you enjoy my videos on bad tech, just subscribe, literally the best way of supporting me. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you later.